It all comes down to this What you require of me Love my neighbor as myself And you above all things Act justly, love mercy Walk humbly with you, God, in all things, in all ways, walk humbly with you, God. It all comes down to this. To be your hands and feet, good news to all the world, the truth will set us free, act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with you. from now we'll see the fruit our hands have sown faith just like a seed the only way it grows Love mercy, walk humbly with you, God, in all things, in all ways, walk humbly with you, God.
Good morning and welcome to Trinity. I am Mother Lizzie and we are glad that you are here worshiping with us this morning. If you are new, there are pew cards in front of you that you can fill out and put in the offering plate. If you're new joining us online, you can type in I'm new and our Kelly, our communications director, will help you get to know us. So, We hope that this is a time of peace and encouragement for you in the midst of your week. As you are able, please kneel for a moment of silent prayer. Please rise.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. reading from the book of Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people when he opened it. All the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, And the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. 
Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go away, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm pointed for today is Psalm 19. We will sing it together. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day he tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands, and their message to the ends of the world. The statutes of the Lord Rejoice the heart. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run in its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, much more than fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, the statutes of the Lord rejoice the A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as a body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. 
If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus, filled with the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surround country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives 
and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed Trinity. Amen. You may be seated. Today, our Old Testament lesson and the gospel parallel in an interesting way. In Nehemiah, the Israelites who returned from exile in Babylon have gathered after the reconstruction of the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. And to begin their celebration of reconstruction, they have Ezra read from the book of the law. We don't know exactly what Ezra read, but it was some collection of pieces from the first five books of the Bible called the Torah, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. Similarly, Jesus starts his his ministry in Luke by quoting from the scriptures. In his case, the prophet Isaiah. The reading from Isaiah neatly reflects many of the concerns of the Jewish law, a care for kin and strangers, which appears frequently in the Torah. And though we don't see it this week in the gospel, both Ezra's reading of the Torah and Jesus' reading of Isaiah elicits a response from those who hear it. In the Old Testament, the people weep when they hear the law because they know they are not living up to its statutes. And because they weep these holy tears of repentance and are prepared to do better, Ezra and Nehemiah encourage the people and tell them that God has prepared good things for them and that God's joy will be their strength. In Luke, the people are initially joyful at Jesus' proclamation until he insinuates that they are not living into the life that God has prepared for them. Then, instead of weeping, they get angry, and they attempt to throw Jesus off of a cliff. It is quite the response. And I don't need to tell you which reaction is preferable, but both ways are ways in which we might respond to revelation ourselves, to learning something new about the way God works in the world. We like to believe that we are good and down in the deepest sense. We are, because God has created us all good. But all of us, can react in anger or denial when we learn that we are not quite living up to God's vision for us. The life of a Christian is one of continual learning, of being worked and reworked by our potter, of being sanctified. And so these revelations we receive, whether by hearing the scripture, hearing truth spoken by a friend, listening to the least among us. All of these are simply ways 
that we can be formed closer to God's image within us. And if we approach this journey of sanctification with the appropriate mindset, it's not onerous. The Israelites of Nehemiah's time got it right. They heard the law, heard the ways that their lives were not matching God's vision for them, and they wept. These, as I said before, were holy tears, tears of repentance. The Israelites yearned to follow God, and following that holy recognition, Ezra and the other leaders encouraged the people and told them that the joy of the Lord is their strength. Because the people wept, that day of rededication was a happy one, a day which marked a turning point for the Israelites, a day of renewed dedication to the Lord. Right now, we are at the beginning of the year, a time when many of us make New Year's resolutions. In fact, by this point, many of us have probably already given up on those resolutions if we made any. I myself made no resolutions this year, but because this is a time when we think about what we want in our lives, we can decide now to dedicate ourselves again to God. We have done this already in the renewal of our baptismal vows. But today's readings give us another angle with which to see our behavior. Because, as we will see next week, the crowd that Jesus addressed did not react well to the gospel that he proclaimed. And all of us have that tendency within us. That tendency to see ourselves as basically good and therefore to shut ourselves off from further learning and shaping from God. We can instead cultivate our hearts to approach the world with continued curiosity and resist the urge to hold too tightly to the things that we think we know. The Holy Spirit will assist us on this front. She will always guide us in truth. It is through her that we are able to keep our hearts open and receptive to the truth and wisdom that she holds. And if you haven't yet heard me refer to the Holy Spirit as she, I do it because God has no gender, is in fact non-binary, but I want to balance our male-dominated God language. And there is ample precedent biblically and in the early Christian writers to call the Holy Spirit she. If you want to know more, ask me. <laughs> so, the Holy Spirit will be our guide in the midst of our curiosity, in the midst of seeking to do the will of God, knowing that there are still more ways that we can be formed. And the primary place we come to learn, where the Holy Spirit guides us, is to the feet of Jesus. And so we come back to our gospel passage in Luke, where Jesus gives his thesis statement in ministry. And the gospel that he proclaims is both for us and a commission to us. So if we are poor or sick or in prison or captive, then the good news is that Jesus has come to release us from those things. If we are experiencing suffering, that is not God's will for us. God does not cause us to be in that state. And it is God, not God's will for us to remain in that state. And so, Jesus proclaims release. But God also calls us to follow. Jesus said, follow me. And so when the good news has released us, we then follow Jesus to proclaim the same release to others. And this is where I can maybe help deepen this passage for you. At the end of Jesus' quote from Isaiah, he says that he has come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 
This is not a simple statement of general goodness, but this refers to something particular given in the law of Moses. The year of the Lord's favor refers to the year of Jubilee. In Leviticus 25, God commands the Israelites to observe a Sabbath year every seventh year. In this year, they will allow the land to rest and nothing will be planted. After seven sets of seven years, the Israelites will then observe a Jubilee year. That is in the 50th year. And in that year, the land will again remain fallow. But also, all the land will return to its original owner, all debts will be forgiven, and all slaves go free. It is a year of rejoicing, reconciliation, rest, and release. And this is the good news of God in Christ, that Jesus has invited all of us into that jubilee to perpetual rejoicing, reconciliation, rest, and release. This state of being is perpetual because even in Jesus' time, Jubilee had come to be associated with God's perfect reign, the kingdom of God. And this is certainly how Jesus meant, meant it when he quoted from Isaiah. The year of the Lord's favor started with Jesus and continues perpetually as we slowly uncover the kingdom of God in our own lives. Now, the kingdom of God and the freedoms of Jubilee have not yet reached completion, but we are invited to participate now in God's reign, to step into the footsteps of Jesus. We are invited to proclaim release to all, to repent to rejoice and rest in the Lord. An open heart, our curiosity and wonder, prepares us to see and enact this jubilee in our lives and in the lives of those around us. So if we can train our hearts to be like the Israelites, to hear the word of God and repent of the space that exists between us and God's perfect kingdom, then we will be poised to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And we are not without an advocate and guide in the Holy Spirit. We are not without an example in Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. God wants joy, rest, and reconciliation in our lives. And God is willing and ready to help us if we will humble ourselves and put our trust in God. Amen. And now, standing together as you are able, let us recite our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, we will use Form 6, found in your bulletin or on page 392 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. For the anthem cycle of prayer, we pray for Hong Kong Shen Kuang Hai. The diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for San, Fran San Francisco de Assis in Austin, Soco, Austin, St. Albans, Manchaca, Austin. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all, all who work for justice, freedom, freedom and, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the, the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friends, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Archbishop Justin, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our bishops Andrew, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, for all bishops and other ministers, we also pray for our seminarian Elisa Stebbing and for her family. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns, praying together for those on our parish prayer list, Donna, Oliver, and Wayman. Richard. We invite individual intercessions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently in the comments online or out loud. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We shall, we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Pray for peace throughout the world, particularly in our own country. Pray for those serving in the armed forces and their families. Pray for the victims of natural and man-made disasters and for the first responders. Pray for our parish and her faithfulness to the mission and ministries Christ has entrusted to us. Pray for the children of the world who suffer and those who are alone and have no one to pray for them. Pray for the people of Afghanistan and Haiti. Pray for the doctors, nurses, and all who care for the sick and dying. Pray for the children in school, teachers, and those who work in our schools. Pray for all who are fighting COVID, that they may find healing, that they may find help in our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and also with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. By your baptism, all are welcome to receive communion. Uh, we will have Super Bowl gumbo on February 13th. If you would like some, sign up in the narthex for it, or if you're joining us online, you can call Melanie in the office. We will have a quiet day provided by Mother Nancy DeForest on February 12th from 9 to 12 in the morning. Uh, so if you would like to go to that, <clears throat> excuse me, then please go sign up out in the narthex. Uh, we will have TNT this Saturday, that's teens in training. If you have anyone uh, fourth through sixth grade, then please bring them to Butler Hall. Uh, that'll be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we will provide food. Let's see, <clears throat> TED's priority re-enrollment is starting and parish members who have new children they would like to enroll uh, also get priority enrollment at this time. So please connect with Betsy Delaney if you are interested in that for any of your children. And join us for coffee hour after church in Butler Hall. Let's see, does anyone have any birthdays or anniversaries today? Please come forward if you do. And if you're online, you can put in the comments your birthday or anniversary and we will pray for you also. I'm going to grab my mask. Good morning. Birthday? How many? Or not, not how many. <laughs> not how many. When? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> birthday? Thursday. Okay. And a birthday? This week. This week. All right. 90. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> All right. And if you're joining us online, please stand and we will pray for your birthday and anniversary as well. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy anniversary. <laughs> And now uh, we will have Everett Key come and talk to us for our ministry in the minute. Morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, my name is Everett Key, and I'm here to talk to you all about Camp Allen. So I'm sure that plenty of you all know what Camp Allen is, but for those who don't, it is a summer camp uh, in Navasota where kids go and spend a week during the summer there overnight. Um, it's about an hour and 15 minutes away. Um, I've been going to Camp Allen since I was a primary camper, which is a rising third grader. Um, I've now been attending Camp Allen for eight years, and this past summer was my first summer as a counselor. Um, I can proudly say that some of my best experiences of my life have been at Camp Allen. Um, I could talk for hours about how many times I've been touched by God at Camp Allen. Um, it's a great place for you to send kids or to sign up as a counselor to spend a week over the summer. And there are plenty of fun activities for your kids like camp games such as Romans and Christians and Live Clue, swimming at the lake, on the blob, archery, and horseback riding. It's a great way for your kids to learn about Jesus Christ and God while still getting the chance to goof off 
eat junk food, and swim in the lake. It would bring me so much joy to see so many familiar faces at camp this summer. Thank you all for listening. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us, an offering and sacrifice to God. creation through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made it will become for us the bread of heaven blessed are you lord god of all creation through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become for us the cup of salvation blessed be god forever Receive, O God, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. Amen. (laughs) 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break. the communion of the body of Christ. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. One body are we, alleluia, for the many we share one bread. Be
In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Let us join together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Do not fear. Your Creator has made you holy, is always with you, and loves you like a mother. Continue on the good path, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
name of Christ. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.